You're listening to FamCast, the For All Mankind podcast, with your hosts, the competitive spirit, Trey Simpson, our own devil's advocate, Tim Weber, and the hopelessly optimistic, Trevor Jorgensen. This is FamCast. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to FamCast. This is episode 73. It's been a long time. It's been a uh, bit. <laughs> it's been... It's been a while. <laughs> it's been it's a while. <laughs> it uh, it definitely has. We've uh, been in in lockdown, man. It's that quarantine life, though. Living that quarant, yeah. That that quarant stream life, if you will. Uh, um, it's been, uh, it's been kind of tough. You know, I think that's, and I, I know for me, you know, I'm I I usually organize and, and kind of lead these podcasts. So I apologize that. I've kind of been slacking and, uh, you know, I, I didn't, uh, put anything together, but it's, it's been tough on, on a lot of people. And, uh, I think it's kind of, it kind of sapped some of my, my creative, uh, or my will to create a little bit. Well, realistically, not a lot has happened except for like the past couple of weeks. Like, like we went through this You're talking lull about of not a lot. Like news, of, like, like news wise? Of news, right. Sure. We, we went through like this lull of not a whole lot of news happening. And then all of a sudden, like the past two weeks, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, I get that. It's um, I I just wanted to. I feel bad because I always like to to stay consistent, but man, it's it's been tough. And I I know it, it it hits everyone different. Some people get like super productive when they're stuck at home for you know two to three months, but me, man, like with with everything that's going on with with work and mm. um, you know, I I can't really. I know no one's supposed to leave the house, but you know, I'm kind of in a different scenario to where I like I really shouldn't. Um, so it, it sucks that. Like I, I haven't even been to the grocery store, man. Like, it's weird. Oof. Like everything just so like you've like not together. left your house like at all. Like the only time I've left my house, it, so I started working from home May sixteenth or okay. seven. No, it was it was St. Patrick's Day, so seventeenth. May. Start, sorry, March. March. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. I was started like, well, it's actually not been that long at all. Yeah, started working from home March seventeenth. Um, so it's been you know solid two months and i honestly i love working from home um like i actually make time for for breakfast and exercise like i i actually feel like a better person yeah no i could feel that um so that part's been good um but yeah since then i've only left the house once to go to to the doctor um for so like you've my- literally been in your house for 24 7 except for the one time yeah dude that's nuts yeah like holy cow like i'm happy i was lucky enough to be able to continue going to work um but like i i didn't but it's been like only a couple days a week or so right sure. so i'm still at home getting to play i it's basically been a big vacation for me personally yeah, for the past two for weeks sure. i go to the store when i need to i still get out of my house to go to work here and there um so i mean it's not that i you know what's going on is bad and i don't disagree with that but it it's almost it's almost hard to say and bad to say, but it's like almost like I'm benefiting from it. You know, it's really weird to say that, but like, no, I I get that because I I think um, I think that's the silver silver lining in this is that um, well I guess your your situation's a little different. So I guess from my point of view, it's um, it's a silver lining because companies can see like okay maybe working from home is a good thing. It's a good point. Um, so I'm hoping that I mean some some places like uh like other buildings uh, within our company are mm. working from them until October, like they're already pushed out wow. that far. Um, if there was ever something that came from this from the company I work for that just stuck, it would be having Sundays off. Yeah, I'm not joking. Just having that one day off of like guaranteed is amazing because it allows me and the couple friends I do have around here to actually be able to plan something and I went golfing with them yesterday for the first time in like two years because we knew we could yeah like it's it's incredible yeah and I I think that's um it's it's kind of hard to do because there's there's all this negativity and and there is um like it's depressing uh, you know everything that's going on but it's good to find that uh you know, the positive side of things, being able to, um, I mean, you're, you're in a different situation to where you're kind of forced to be social, um, to where like, you you have to go to work, you're interacting with your coworkers and, you know, people that come into your store too. Correct. Um, so you're, you're in a little bit different of a situation, but, 
um, I think that's good that you still have that social interaction. Um, and I'm, I'm lucky I don't live alone. Um, I'm Ooh, thankful man. that, that, uh, Trey lives here that, you know, I, I at least have social interaction with him, you know, Trey looks super thankful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trey's super thankful for that. I'm sure. <laughs> no, I am. Mm. It's uh yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, I've, yeah. I mean, I've been saving some, been saving some money for sure. You know? Dude, I didn't even think about your situation like that. Like this whole time, like yeah. I didn't even think about the fact. Like I don't know, honestly. I mean, I could have done it because I would have played a lot of video games. But like, I don't know. It would have still been rough because even like a week vacation, like a staycation, right? You have a staycation, yeah. and I'm not joking. Like after being in my house for three or four days, just straight on one of those. I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm looking forward to go to work, but I'm looking forward for a reason to go get out of the house and work being was, is one of those reasons at that yeah, time. For sure. So like not being able to go to your house for the reasons that you have and completely rightful reasons that you have. Holy cow. Yeah. Two months essentially. I mean, I, I just saw KB for the first time yesterday or wow. I, I've seen her before. Um, Like she's uh, like, we've talked through the window, like she'll bring Frodo over and we'll like talk through the Aww. window, but um. Like I actually got to hang out with you yesterday because we've like we've been, I guess, unexposed to other people for. Yeah, you both or quarantined. That is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so we're like, OK, like we feel like because she's had to go in occasionally to work, which like resets the clock, which sucks. Um, but then, you know, since she had that period of, you know, being safe, we being finally got to hang out, which was really, really nice. Um, yeah, I'm sure. And that's probably much needed. So yeah. that's good. And I've, I don't know about you guys. I've been able to catch up at least on a few uh, few games and shows while I've uh, been stuck inside. I, realistically speaking, <laughs> well, what yeah. have I? I mean, I'm trying to. I, okay, look. And I hate being one of these guys. I do. <laughs> like, because, you know, we used to poke fun. But damn it, if I'm not addicted to Warzone, I have been addicted to that game ever since it launched. Like, oh, so, but I did, da I have started dabbling back into Outer Worlds, which is nice. I've been wanting a good game to play good. that I haven't got a chance to play. And I did, I did start dabbling into Outer Worlds a bit. So I'm enjoying that a lot. But a lot of my life is Warzone right now. Yeah. Because it brings together literally all my group, my gaming friends. And sure. I think that's a big part of it. Like, my dad and them play it, Moon Pickle and them play it, Ben and I play it, we play it. Like, it's literally the game out right now that all of my friends enjoy playing. So I'm just like on top of it. Yeah. I mean, that. I mean, that's a good reason. Like, if, if you can get into all of your different friend groups with one game. Right. Right. And that's, yeah. For sure. There's always someone I can play with. Like, yeah. always. Yeah. It's like with, like, TFT. I never play TFT alone, mm. but... Um, you know, we, we've got enough of us that play that normally I can find someone that wants to play, but it's, I don't know why you don't play it alone. You're fantastic. You should just <laughs> become, what is the, what is the highest ranking in TFT master diamond Omega? I'm what only gold it? three. We should just get Trevor league up going. <laughs> ML, MLG battles or, uh, what yeah. were those called? Oh my game God. Battles? MLG bad game battles. Game yeah. Battles. <laughs> get into them game battles. Oh my gosh. I remember I was, oh, I used God. to sign up, uh, for those for, I think it was Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Oh, nice. Um, I did like competitive fights on there. And <laughs> most like nobody showed up for their matches. Like you had like scheduled matches and stuff. Right. So yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. It just wasn't fun. Like I was getting wins because no one would show up. But I'm like, this isn't really what I get them points, bro. For. Take them to the leagues. Right. Gears of War was the only one I really did game battles with. We, we dabbled in COD, but a lot of it was Gears of War. Back when Gears 1 and 2 were in its prime, yeah. we did a ton of game battles for Gears. Yeah. Me and Mr. Pickle. It was a good time. So you um, you brought up uh, playing Outer Worlds, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's been a while since I played because I think that was last September that it came out. Yes, yeah, September, and, it, and I think the only reason I stopped playing it then was because of Borderlands. Yeah, it was, like yeah. realistically speaking, it was just it was like, like they right were there. a week apart or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I just since I haven't played it in so long, what are your what are your initial thoughts? What do you think? So it's very fun. Um, it's I forgot how graphically beautiful the game is. Like it is a very, very, very pretty game. It's a lot of fun. I've uh, I'm still on the first planet because you go to multiple planets in this game, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still I'm still in the first planet, um, and I I'm still using like the initial pistols. I got a couple things, so I'm hoping I see more guns. Um, the perks in the systems works. I, I I have to be getting off this planet soon because I'm just now going to go get my what is it, like the regulator something for my ship. 
Okay. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's whatever. That's where. Yeah. I'm so at. yeah, you're still it's, very early right. on then. Yeah. So I'm super early on, but I mean, it is very. I like the combat system a lot. Um, the slowing down thing's really neat, and I can see how I can build. I'm honestly, I'm intrigued. I can't wait to really get into it because I know there's a ton of things I can do in this game from what I remember seeing. Right. Yeah. So there's all kinds of weapons and stuff. So I'm so I'm really excited to to see what that can involve into because I want to see that stuff. Um, but it is very, very fun. And the characters, the characters, like the voice acting in general for like the main characters is so good. Like even the dude who's a dick in the uh, the main city, Edgewater, like I can't remember his name oh, right off the yeah. top of my head. Yeah. Uh, I kind of feel bad for him. <laughs> like I'm not going to spoil anything, but like the dude who plays him, I, I don't even honestly think he's a bad guy. It's almost like they're trying to play him off as a bad guy. But like you're, I'm sitting there thinking like, is he though? Like, cause I really don't think he, I really think he's doing the best that he can with what he got. Like, I don't. <laughs> Man, that, that right there is exactly mm. why I fell in love with Outer Worlds because it, it makes you, it's not just like a set, like this is the bad guy. We have to take him down. You, you're going to be put in these morally gray areas to where you're like, actually, like I can kind of see both sides of this. Yeah. And, and like, that's what I love. I mean, with, with games like this, I'm, I love building relationships uh, with characters and, um, you know, making choices that, you know, change the game. Um, so something like that to where it's not just a flat out, this is the bad guy. Do you want to join him or fight him? It's like, well, he might be bad, but also, like you said, maybe he's just doing the best with what he has. And I um, really think that's true. Yeah. Like, I really think he is. And I felt so bad, essentially, like spoilers for the next like five seconds or so. Right. So I don't want to ruin anything, but like, like essentially... I'm kicking him out. And like, he's just like, and he's like, I didn't even kick him out meanfully. He's like, no, you know what? If she knows what she's doing, this town needs her. And I'm just like, oh, no, wait, hang on. You don't have to leave. Let me go talk to her. <laughs> Maybe like, dude, it's intense. But it, it's cool because it gives you multiple ways to, not only do you have like that, that big choice, you also have multiple ways of handling it too, right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. There were definitely, I could have definitely went in there a lot different. Yeah, right. <laughs> it could have been a whole lot messier yeah. than what I tried. So that, but that like was definitely refreshing uh, because yeah. I haven't, I haven't yeah. been able to. Yeah. And I mean, you, you know, Obsidian, they're they're good at games like they that. Are. Um, they are. And that's, uh, you know, a lot of times, butter. like when it comes to the games like this that come out and then I don't, I, I tend to not go back to them like how I did with the Outer Worlds. But one of the big reasons I chose to do that was one, because it is made by Obsidian. Like I, they've made one of the best games that I love playing. So I know the game's good. It was just poor timing of its release date for me because I was so hyped for Borderlands at Borderlands. And I still play Borderlands to this day. Um, so, but I really, I wanted to, I needed a new single player game. I, I, another, it's like, I, cause I'm so wrapped up into Warzone, yeah. right? That I need something other than that. And I want it to be this game. And I, and it's, it's so beautiful. And the gunplay is really smooth. Like it is very good. Trey, have you played Outer Worlds? Yeah. Have you, did you complete it or anything? Like, did no, you enjoy no. it? I, I think I, I stopped like right after the first planet. Yeah. Okay. And that's, and then that was when my, when my initial playthrough, I pretty much stopped there too. Uh, I was only two hours into it. I looked at my last save before I started again, and it was only two hours into it, so I wasn't very far. Did you enjoy what you played? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it was great. Um, it's really fun. I really like the the choice that you make and how different everyone's gameplay has been. Like, when I was playing the game, and between talking with uh, Trevor and I, like, we had completely two like different stories really? like, that was going on. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I think with his, like his was like, what did what, you ended up like saving like both of them, right? Or something like that. Oh man, it's been so long. I can't remember. Um, but I, I definitely try and I usually try and play the, the, the good guy. Like that's sure. You know. sure just like, we can all get yeah. along. Yeah. Yeah. No, mine was like, I said one thing and the whole town came after me. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so. oops, uh, get him man. out. Um, speaking of Obsidian, they've got that new game coming out, um, Grounded. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know this, or maybe really I just cool. didn't remember this. Yeah, I think you, you've probably seen it. It's, um, you're like the size of an ant. Um, so you, Kids that got shrunk down, basically. Yeah, you, you get shrunk. I don't know if you get shrunk down. I, um, to be honest, I've kind of tried to, like, avoid a whole lot. Like, I don't want to go, I don't want to get, like, too in-depth. Um, i I don't know. I really so, don't know what we're talking about. Um, here, let me see if I can. I'll get some some more info. I can't even remember where it was revealed. Um, What's it supposed to be like? Is it, you just a shrunken kid? Um, so you, you're you're shrunk down. Um, 
and you you're basically like you build this um i don't know if you want to call it like a like a settlement or like a fortress um survival camp yeah so it's kind of like a like a survival type game um fighting it actually you're you're an xbox insider right yeah um you can do the um the beta on june 9th okay Um, well then but like you like you go around you gather resources uh you have to deal with um, you know, obviously, there's like friendly insects, but also enemy insects. So like uh, but they're gonna be like stuff. gigantic because you're small. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Um. So it's, I guess like a survival RPG style game. Okay. Um. Okay. So definitely or survival seems... horror if you're afraid of bugs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. They even said, and I thought this was pretty cool. They said there's um an arachnophobia mode. So if you're like afraid of spiders, they don't want that to stop you from playing the game. So you can actually just Aww. toggle that on, and you can still. So play just for you, Tim. Spiders. Just for me. Yeah. <laughs> They're lava spiders, actually. <laughs> Good times. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, kind of like what you said, we've we've gotten a lot of news in the uh, the past couple weeks. Um, so I figure we'll just kind of let's we'll kind of shoot the shit and go through uh, go through some of our favorite announcements uh, from within yeah. quarantine. I know. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, I've just been I've just been working, you know. <laughs> don't forget about me you know yeah, hey, I've, I've working chime in guys. whenever dude <laughs> so so because you're still you you've never stopped working though right trey like you've no. worked constant since this whole thing yeah. began yeah like even i in, had like I mean, a two-week break yeah i'm in i'm in training right now so it's kind of been like i've kind of been off but um it's been it's been interesting uh yeah. we're like the first class that's ever been like that's done uh like virtual training Okay, uh, at least in this position, so it's interesting. Now, it's different. I mean, I, I kind of like it, but I, I definitely wasn't it supposed to only be like a week long. But like, I see, like, I feel like it's going longer than what its initial thing was. Like your training, or was oh was no, it like it's a supposed month to be, long? It's supposed to be this long. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe okay. we have like two weeks of like the initial training, and then we have like two weeks of um, like transition. So we're actually doing the stuff that we're supposed to be doing, oh. and then I go back into training for another part of. Uh, the position and then i go to another and are you still like a full 40 finish. like you're just like you're basically still yep. full-time right you, i mean you you Monday basically nothing of this has really changed what you've done right yeah, Other, I, I mean you're just in no. training so like are you still just doing your day-to-day stuff do you or like because i know trevor has situations a little bit different than yours so have you been going out more or are you still staying um, in the house? i'm definitely staying in as much as i can i usually just do like a grocery run if i have to mm. you know i'll gear up i put my gloves on and my my face mask and stuff but because I know we've been playing um, Warzone together. Like we have that yeah, thing we yeah. do every like almost four days a week now, right? We do it Monday. No, we do it three days a week. We have Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Fridays. Yep, Monday, so Wednesday, we play Friday. Warzone. So you've been doing that with me. But like, okay, so outside of that, is there any other games that you've been doing on quarantine? Um, I've been playing Valorant, of course. Um, Still haven't played that. TFT. I've uh, been doing a little bit of Legends of Runeterra. I forgot uh, it's on mobile, and I need yeah, I need dude, to re- I need to get back into really Legends nice. of Runeterra. Yeah, man. Um, you I mean you get so many free cards? It's like, why not? Did okay. <laughs> Have they get... the what was the class where they were invisible or not invisible? But you can't attack them unless you were that. Oh, same. Uh, evasive. Or, oh yeah, evasive. Because that was one of the reasons I stopped playing was because I I just ran into so many evasive decks that were just ridiculous. Is yeah. that still the same? Like, is evasive still a problem, or do they have other I ways? Do they tone it don't down? No, I haven't really looked okay. into it competitively. Man, um, I just kind of was... make decks to make decks. Like I have one right now. It's like a like a living dead deck basically is mm-hmm. what I call it. Um, so it's like every card plays off each other where it's like, if something dies, you know, something happens or yeah, actually I have know, a deck, something dies uh, and something like re revives or I have a know, deck similar to that, or, or at least like that. I did. I don't yeah. know if it's still there. I don't know if they just go away after beta. Cause it's not in beta. No, anymore, they don't. Right? Okay. No, they're all there. Um, so, but like almost, I, so I have several decks, right? And most card decks you're going to have, there's there are going to be counters to your decks like a lot of card mm-hmm. decks have that that's just games in general but evasive was just a counter to everything i ever had and it was just evasive everywhere was man it was just like oh my god yeah it was, it was the only something. thing that would work would be like what like challenger or whatever they made it where you have to attack like, like this yeah person. like stuff like that was really good yeah. but I don't know, it was the whole thing it was the whole thing but other than that i mean i haven't really been playing anything much of much else i mean other than like animal crossing of course like I, I go in now since i've actually like bought my house out and everything the only thing i really do now is like i'm trying to make it that five star town and just customizing stuff and it's been fun i still. lost five hundred thousand bells 
just lost them, killed the game well, for me instantly. Gotta gotta know the rules of the game, dude. I just lost them. I was so mad. Those I mean, are it was on me. Rules. I'm not gonna t I'm not gonna blame the game. It was on me, but it's still a hard loss. Story behind that: Tim didn't know that uh, turnips died after the uh, the new week started, so I hate he the uh, he invested so and then he lost it all. I did. I lost it all because I didn't know that. I was so mad. I just the whole turnip thing. That could be a whole episode in itself. <laughs> right. I mean, um, yeah. I don't know, man. It. Um, I stopped because I've I've built up like I don't need a whole lot of money. Like I'm I'm not one of these people that needs to have like a hundred million bells in the bank. Like I think I've got like two million in there, and I'm like I. I don't really need bells for much. Like I'll I'll buy a cool item when it comes into the shop, but beyond that, there's yeah, a there's exactly a whole other sounds. community that just like gets so involved in the like the Nookazon stuff, gets so involved in the trading of all these, you know, DIYs and, and rare items. And I think it's cool. Yeah. I think it's a, a great I think things like like Discord and Nookazon, it's it's made for an awesome online community for um mm. for Animal Crossing. Um but also like a a lot of people are just greedy, man. Like, you you're like, oh, I, I this guy has this uh, has this moon chair for sale. Um, I'll, I'll see. I've got the materials. Let me see if we'll make it for me. And they'll be like, yeah, I can make that for you, but it'll be forty Nook Mile tickets, a hundred thousand bells, and then one rare item yeah. from your catalog. Like, oh my gosh! Like, no, like I know. But it yeah. takes you literally like three seconds to be like, click. Okay, here yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah I don't know. It's, it's there's there's good and there's good sides of that community and, and like greedy sides of the community. I'll be dead honest with you. I've just completely missed the days of a completely offline Animal Crossing at yeah. that point. Like cuz at the, everything was hard work then. Well nothing was given to you. You had to work hard and you like waking up, going getting seeing a rare bug and catching a rare bug that you knew was worth like 30,000 bells was so exciting yeah and if yeah. you lost it because you missed it you were devastated and it like was just a bad time yeah. and now it's just like okay well sunday i'll wake up i'll buy a bunch of turnips and then i'll go on this thing and someone will post that they're selling turnips for six hundred thousand dollars or six hundred thousand or six hundred six hundred bells or whatever per turnip and i'll just go make a quick five mil and then i'll pay off all my stuff and we'll do this in a matter of three days i just it just it ruins the experience for me and yeah, it's not because sure. and i know like well you just don't have to do it i get it but the fact is i could do that at any point in time my mind's going to tell me you're putting all this hard work in for zero reason because there's an easier way to do it sure and no, it I, just I it that. ruins the experience that it just does it just the way the turnip thing worked out ruined the experience of animal crossing for me this isn't even the first animal crossing apparently to do this there was there was another one that did this exact same thing wasn't there or am i wrong what probably new leaf that had this thing where you could just go to someone's island, sell their turnips, and come back to your island for this. It's like I never, the exact same process. So I've never really been big into turnips in any game before this. Um, right. I mean, main, mainly because it it. I don't know if you could go to other people's towns. I you probably could in in New Leaf, but um, yeah, just relying on me, like my my shop, to have good prices that week, it wasn't worth the risk for me. I'm like, I don't feel like. Right, and like, and and I don't think the turnip. It, aspect of itself is bad because if it's your own island you can only buy and sell from your own island that's really that that's completely okay because at that point you know again sunday you come in sure do you want to buy them they're pretty high but you know you also have that chance of but you're not you there's no easy way out you know what i mean yeah. like you might there's just there's just not so like i felt like the online aspect of how the turnips work is what ruins it because I just don't have a point to playing it. I just don't. I don't. Knowing that I can go get money like that. The only reason I want to beat the game is to Terramorph. Mm -hmm. And then make my island how I want it. But even still, yeah. I'm just like, I just like whatever at this point. And it sucks because the game is phenomenal. Like yeah. I, this Animal Crossing is really, really good. But they're just, I don't know. I, I don't have... I don't have that desire to go put as much time into it that I feel like the game deserves because there's just an easy way out. They they did say they have um they have um like new new updates planned for at least the next three years, um so not yeah, only awesome. are these like reoccurring events uh gonna mm -hmm. keep happening like the ones that happen yearly, um but mm -hmm. they're gonna keep adding more and more in over the uh, the next three years, which I think is awesome because they they've got a lot of like NPCs that they can add in, new furniture sets, um like there's really no limit to what what they could put in there. Of so. course, um who knows maybe and some like, of that'll because I, I feel like in this one, it's a, it feels different almost because 
in most Animal Crossing games, like the the end goal is to pay off the house. And when, like right. that's I never even did that in New Leaf. Like it it just got to be a lot, and probably because I didn't play the the turnip market. Um, but in this one, I feel like I got the house paid off, and then the game really started. Um, cause now like I've got the, I've got the new shop and some of the, like the expense, there's one expensive item in the shop every day. And some of those are like really expensive. Like they might be like over a million bells. Mm. Um, so I, I definitely get where you're coming from to where it's like, okay, well it makes it easy. And I've always got that to fall back on. It kind of removes the, like it makes my, my work null and void. Um, right, because going, getting up at like and getting my stuff and getting fifty thousand bells a day, and making like like a goal, whether it be fishing or but, was a big deal to me. I'd wake up yeah. and I'd do that for a couple hours, and I'd see what my money got in that day, and then call it a day. And yeah, sure. Go on. I know. I think there's. I just say that to say I think there's a lot more you can do with your money. It's not just paying off the house, but I think there's um, a lot more you can do. Whether it's um, you know getting new DIY, and then for that mm-hmm. maybe you need some some rare materials, like you need um, gold, which you can't, you can't buy gold. Um, you know, I, I just think there's a lot more to it after you pay off the house instead of where in previous games, the house was the end goal. And this one, it's more like making your Island, your, your dream vacation is, is more of the end goal, I guess. Um, fair enough. Or making it into whatever you want. Like people have, um, Gary Weta has a, a talk show where he like, he's, this dude's bringing in celebrities, um, to his Island. Yeah. Like he That's does awesome. like a, it's like a late night talk show set up. Um, it's really, he's, he got a Danny Trejo on there. Um, he got Elijah <laughs> awesome. Wood. Like it's so cool to see what people are doing with our islands instead of just like just playing the game normally. Right. So he's bringing in, uh, he got T-Pain on there. Um, hmm. So he just brings in these celebrities and basically just interviews them. Um, you've got some people that host game shows um, to where they have all these like intricate setups, like, we try to do um, like a like a gift swap, which like that was kind of fun. But people are like ga- like legit gambling, uh, where they have like these boards set up to where you you stand on a specific square and you spin two wheels, and if it matches up, you know, on the X and Y, then I don't know. It, it's just cool to see how creative people are being. I guess that's neat. I mean, and then yeah, and look, I I have no way like dissing the game. The game is great. No, no, no. It's yeah, it's it. my experience that I'm just like it's me per. It's a it's a personal thing. I think the game's great. I think people who are enjoying it should enjoy it. There's no reason you're not. There were just things I personally it, it kind of got me out of yeah. right. But yeah, no, and that's really neat. I'm happy to see that people are people are just doing. People can do crazy things. In some games, it just makes like like when someone and, and not to bring us off subject, but anytime I think of some people doing crazy things in games, I would always think of somebody completely recreating Pokemon Red and Blue in Minecraft yeah. on a Game Boy, yeah. and it, like you get it's literally a giant playable Game Boy that you can play. But people, I don't know how people do what they do, but yeah, well done to them. I I feel like we like we grew up with games. I I think our generation kind of I don't know. I feel like our generation is really. Um, God, what was the word I'm looking for? I think we grew up at a great time because we we've got to see games evolve as as we, we have. as we grow up. But imagine the kids that are growing up now that have all these resources and tools available to where they can really show off their creativity in games at such a young age. Mm. Um, because like we we had things like uh, like Roller Coaster Tycoon or, or oh, Zoo man. Tycoon, Roller uh, you know, Coaster Tycoon, <laughs> <laughs> um, phenomenal. You know, yeah. Um, so it's not to say that there there weren't options for us to be creative in games back then, but man, it just it's just kids can do the, whatever the they tools wanted. nowadays are. It's crazy. awesome. Crazy. Yeah. Yes. I think it's awesome. I think it. I mean, these games are are going to really form the the next generation of game developers Mm. um so it's it's exciting stuff um i played uh i i know we we mentioned backlog and um you know trey's been playing valorant tim you've been uh you you uh played outer worlds one game that i actually got through recently was horizon zero dawn oh um which i've i've picked up um I, i picked up when it came out and for whatever reason like I, I played it a little bit and then just, I don't know if something else came out or I was busy, just never got through with it. Um, but I don't know, recently there's, um, it got announced that it's coming to PC this summer. And I was like, you know what? I've got it on PS4. Let me just go ahead and, and play it. I'm so glad I play this game finally. Um, yeah. It's 
it's easily one of my favorite PS4 games. Um, I've heard nothing but good things. It's awesome, man. It's it's kind of like um, I don't know. The the story caught me off guard because like from just from looking at it uh, like base value, just watching a trailer or something, you're like, okay, this is set in a in a future, and it looks like you know humans somehow got like got reset basically. Like mm-hmm. there's not really technology, but there's all these mechanical like dinosaurs and animals walking around. So it there's a lot of mystery. Like, okay, w- what the hell happened that that caused this? Um, and I never really I don't know thought too much about it. But as that story unfolds in the game, it's really cool. And they they set it up to uh, to have another. So I'm I'm really hoping to to see more of that 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 series in the. Um, you know, probably on, well, I guess at this point on the PS5. Um, but yeah, I was just blown away, man. It, I guess you could say it kind of plays like uh, Monster Hunter in in a way to where like some of the, really? uh, the animals have, um, they've got different like weak points and they're, they're weak to certain things. So you, you kind of have to learn, learn the enemies. You can scan them uh, to kind of learn what their, their weak points are and what attacks they use. Um, you can build different loadouts yourself. Like you've got all kinds of different weapons and armors mods for the armor so it's it's a lot more in depth than i originally uh took it for it's not just i'll probably pick that up then for sure when it comes on pc yeah because i want to play it um i'll probably pick that up i think you'd like it man the i mean just even if not for the gameplay the story alone was uh was just nuts really enjoyed that um i think that's really the only game that i've i've kind of played through in quarantine other than um like a all right i did just beat a uh an indie game two nights ago called if found um it was like a visual novel that was that was really good um it took about two huh. hours to beat but um it was from anna annapurna um uh they did sayonara wild hearts um donut country or donut oh, county donut sorry yeah donut um, county yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so they, they've done a bunch of uh really really good indie games um so i figured i'd pick that one up um do we want to talk about some uh some of the announcements we've gotten over the the past weeks slash yeah. months. Well, this uh, this is a uh, uh, an unfortunate week because this was the week Last of Us Two was supposed to come out, yeah. and it's not. Yeah, we've so, we've had a few of those, man. Uh, about a month ago, we had the same thing with Cyberpunk. Oh, you right. Yeah. Even before that, it's Final Fantasy VII. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. Avengers was supposed to come out mm-hmm. this past week. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's a weird time because imagine if these games came out and we're all just stuck inside and we have nothing to do but to play these games. <laughs> um, it's amazing. Yeah, it would have been it would have been perfect. But um, I obviously I'm I'm thankful that they're giving everyone the time they need to uh, um, to finish the game and, and make it what it needs without burning out. Um, of course, everyone working on it. Um, we got some uh, crazy announcements though. Well, I don't want to say crazy, but some pretty interesting ones yeah yeah tim i i think your favorite was listening to the uh the the tech show from uh from playstation look (laughs) i get what it was Grant, i didn't know what it was before going in there necessarily like oh man (laughs) we definitely like overhyped it i was was like like you know because like look everyone knows i'm more of an xbox guy than a playstation guy i but i have nothing against playstation i mean i own a playstation and sony the last of us is still to this day, my favorite single player story game I have ever played. Like I, it was a yeah. phenomenal game. So, so I was excited because I wanted to see the tech behind it. And I kind of did. <laughs> um, you sure I did. just, I, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, the information was there, but it was it over my been, head. I'll be honest. It was, yeah. Like, it, like you really had to be a tech enthusiast like and know what was happening to really know what was happening and like look it was just boring i'll say it i'll just it was oh my god it was a very boring hour yeah like i the information was given to us so kudos to them for saying what they did no no they they did not promise anything that they did not deliver yeah but oh boy was it not (laughs) delivered by just it was a lot of a lot of tech jargon or Tons what it was like jargon. it was like 30 30 minutes or so i thought it was an hour oh it was an hour was it only well, i thought it was an hour okay well like, basically a lot of tech jargon it felt an like hour. an hour if it wasn't an hour like yeah. i mean 
it the, was they could have boiled it down um into like a five minute thing that just said uh hard drive go fast yeah, um, <laughs> yeah you know, like, like right. <laughs> um hard drive go fast audio good yeah like, um, that's what but, it but been. i mean obviously with that there's a lot of people um like like unreal saying that you know that that solid state technology that they have mm. is pretty insane like right. you know saying that it's currently obviously not saying for the future but currently faster than any high-end pc which is pretty nuts right um that we saw from that we actually saw from that uh ps5 tech demo uh, and i think them. yeah i think what's really interesting to see is so whenever someone thinks of power like their number one thing goes like gpus yeah. right yeah. like well how good's the gpu what's the gpu gonna be you know blah blah blah, blah. but like a good ssd like sony's talking about like in the tech demo showed that like yeah. how important that can actually be to a, to a game because of how quick it can deliver the the information that needs to be delivered and everything yeah like that's some intense shit yeah yeah unreal like, 5 is going to be nuts um granted it I, scares I, me price wise hmm? like thinking of that though right like so we got so so unreal 5 is like crazy it's, and it's yeah, free yeah. right to anybody who wants way. to use it yeah but like i'm i still don't know man all this tech i don't Where know do if these things are going to be six hundred dollars you think it's going to be more i mean i know it's going to be asking for a lot if it is but man there's I'm, a lot of power behind these machines man 450 no wow. no get out I, of here my guess. <laughs> i say 500 minimum i said six and i'm gonna stick with that but my wow. gosh like if these come out at 600 dollars, people best respect <laughs> and appreciate what they are getting for that price point i mean oh uh, it's it's interesting because we we have all this transparency from from xbox like they've They've given a lot of information. Um, yeah. You know, we we've seen what the system looks like for one, which is which is cool. Um, we've seen the controller. We've seen the the tech specs behind the console. Um, some third then, party titles. Yeah, we saw uh, some of their uh, their their third party titles, and they've they've made this this promise to you. Okay, every month we're going to have this inside Xbox, mm -hmm. and you guys are going to learn more, which is great. Yeah. Um, but Sony's just taking this completely opposite approach to where, okay, this month we'll show you a picture of the controller. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this month um, we'll tell you yeah. some stuff about the solid state drive that mm. you probably won't understand, but it's actually really, really cool. Mm. Um, which is, I don't know, man, like it, it definitely has me excited for it. So I don't know if that's their, if that's their intention is, okay, we're just going to give as little information as possible. Build suspense and then constantly. when we're ready, we're just going to like drop the bomb and you're just going to have all this, all this info. I mean, uh, they, they did say, I think their CFO said it was either a week or two ago that like, we're going to get some, some launch title information soon. Um, so I'm, I would guess that that would be around E3 time, which if you guys can imagine, we we would have been flying out to E3 in like two weeks. I know. I just had to tell my manager that I don't need that week off. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Mine like, is still on the books too. I was just like, look, I don't need it off, unfortunately. It was, we, we go to E3, but there's no E3. Yeah. I might still take it just to, just to be able to watch everything. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's we, Are they going to have things to watch though? Like, yeah, um, so Jeff Keighley's doing his uh, Summer Games Fest. Hmm. Um, so obviously there's not an E3, but yeah. um, like if we're looking at that week, the the Steam Game Festival is going on uh, that week. Okay, you so there's going to be something to tune into. Cyberpunk has an announcement on Thursday. EA Play is on Thursday. Woo! Uh, <laughs> um, and Ubisoft has their thing, I think, the month after in July. I'm excited for that. Ubisoft? Yeah. yeah. Just give me Beyond Good and Evil 2 stuff, please. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of excited for these like little... It, it's been kind of nice. I know uh, Jeff Keighley's put together the Summer Games Fest to have all these these announcements. Um, and it's it's kind of cool to have them spread out. Like Every week it kind of has me wondering, like, oh, are we going to get like some sort of surprise mm. reveal? Um, and he's been doing a few like Q&As. Like he did a Q&A with uh, Ed Boon. Um, show oh, off yeah. Rogue, 
RoboCop's uh, stuff. Um, what yeah, are they called, Trey? That. Friend, friendly things. Friendships. Friend, Friendships. Friendship. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it's been fun. Um, oh man, my my favorite so far. It's wasn't a part of uh, the Summer Games Fest, but the state of play for Ghost of uh, Tsushima. Ooh, that was really oh, good. Yeah. Oh yeah, my gosh! Awesome. I'm really excited for that. I think yeah. all of us are pretty much excited for yeah. that. Um, that game looks so absolutely good. intense. That blew me away, man. When uh when they showed like they're they're kind of talking through and they're looking at the map and you real like when it clicks in your head that you see that there's not a waypoint and it's just the wind that's guiding you. I'm like, oh my gosh! Like that's really neat. That's so cool to keep. You have this beautiful game that you don't want to clog up with a with a UI. Like you don't right. want all these all these HUD elements clogging up and distracting from this this game you've created um i think that's a brilliant way to still appreciate the the beauty of the game mm -hmm. but you know ha include the gameplay mechanics no gotta... yeah i think it's genius i think the whole approach to it's really it's just it's a gorgeous looking game and i like that you can become what is it you have the ghost or the samurai essentially right so you can be or are you a samurai who winds up becoming the ghost so i was trying to figure that out is that what it is or like can i just be the samurai because like if you want to go the ghost route it's like very stealthy and sneaky but you can also yeah. go the samurai route and just rah, just run up and slice people yeah so i i think we kind of see this um this uh, um evolution of of Jin throughout the game to where he he starts off as the the samurai i believe but then it's this evolution into what he has to become with the the ghost. So you, it's not choosing one or the other, um, okay. but you start um, to kind of incorporate um, the the two play styles. Like if you okay. want to play stealthy, that doesn't mean you have to solely stick to ghost um, like techniques. Like you okay. can you can you know use samurai, um, or like if if you if you're fighting as a samurai, that doesn't mean you can't throw a smoke bomb. And, right. and use that, you know, as part of the the ghost. That makes sense. Tech tree. I don't. I don't know what to to really call it, but I, yeah, it's it's more of an evolution of or this merging of the the two, which would be really cool. Um, I'm glad it's not like the the morality system to where okay, are you going to be a good guy or a bad guy? Right. And then you're right. stuck with. You know, That's such a common thing that it's nice to yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Which don't get me wrong, I, I like those games. Um, like we were just talking about it with Outer Worlds. Um, yep. You know, do you want to play as more of a good guy or a bad guy? Right. Um, so I, I like those kind of games, but I, I think this will be something a little different that will be refreshing. Um, I agree. So that that one was exciting to see. Um, I don't. Is there much to talk about with the the inside Xbox that we saw with the third party titles? Anything that really like blew you guys away? No, honestly, not really. Yeah, and I, I know that kind of caught a lot of heat. Um, I don't, I don't know if maybe that's not the right phrase, but um, it was supposed to be this big gameplay reveal of uh, of the Xbox One, um, with um, Valhalla, Assassin's Creed yeah. Valhalla, which I guess we could talk about <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah. But um, everyone was expecting gameplay, but they showed because they like, said that's what they said. They yeah. literally said it in the video. Um, and here's gameplay. But it was it was just in game footage. Yeah, which is cinematics I, and stuff. I guess could be seen as gameplay, but I think when you say gameplay, people expect to see, okay, what am I going to see when I play this game? Correct. Um, Someone playing the game. Yeah. Like. So <laughs> that was a little interesting. I would have liked to see more, but with Valhalla being announced, I actually am really stoked for it. Um, I know Tim, you're, you've got your own gripes with, with the series as a whole. Um, but I, I like I think Vikings are cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> Look, I like Black Flag just because I got to be a really good. It was like one of the best pirate games of its time. Like Black Flag as an Assassin's Creed game. Again, this, I have a gripe with Assassin's Creed as a whole, but like the Black Flag series was really fun. The game was really fun because it was it was just a great pirate game. Yeah. Uh, so who knows? Maybe I won't like Valhalla as a Assassin's Creed game because I just again that's the whole thing. But maybe yeah. it'll just be an amazing Viking game. Yeah. Just uh, just when you buy it, just cover up the Assassin's Creed part of the, the title. <laughs> right. Just see right. uh, see see if you like it any better. There you go. Like, oh, because um, you you don't you don't like the idea of that it's this predetermined thing. 
It's um, yeah, the whole like, and it's a stupid thing. Look again, I don't disagree that my 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 issue with these this series <laughs> isn't dumb. Like I know it is, but I can't unsee it. I can't unissue it. <laughs> yeah. Like it's the thought of playing a a a, a memory, a dream. It's not even a dream. It's a memory. It's a it's a your ancestors' memories or whatever. It just bothers me. It takes me out of the experience because I it's like it's a predetermined outcome of something that like I I feel I know I have control of it, but I. I feel like I don't. It, it's it, it's a whole weird mental thing with me of like <laughs> it, it's dumb, but it's just it's weird. I can't. I uh, yeah. I don't. That's I don't about know. Man. As much as I can I've never. Uh, yeah. I I understand what you're saying for sure. Um, and it's been this way since the first game. I want that to be known. Ever since. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I enjoyed Assassin's Creed One, but as I was di- as the story went deeper, I'm just like, oh, I'm just playing this dude's like ancestor's memory. Yeah. So like. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Whatever. It's stupid. I know, but it's there. I can't stop it. That's fair, man. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for it. I think it'll be, I think it'll be fun. Um, I guess I'll wait to see some gameplay to. <laughs> yeah. Any, you know, speaking of pirate games though, and I'm just asking this because I've not seen or heard anything of this game in a long time. <laughs> Skulls and Skull bones. bones. Yeah. What <laughs> happened to this game? I was yeah. excited, ex- excited for this game <laughs> i've yeah. got a picture of you at a uh on a pirate wheel for that yeah. at, like e3 from two years two ago, years maybe? ago because yeah. we saw during the e3 the 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 you play thing when we were sitting outside yeah, with the super soft. extremely hot bean bags and getting free pizza yeah. rolls <laughs> yeah like, oh my gosh the dream that taco truck and we didn't get to go oh, last wow. year we didn't it was so lame they just said nah <laughs> I yeah. went to the gate the no so okay. let's i guess we should give some we should probably give some context to these stories so um, and we, we go to E3, we've gone to E3 the past three years. This will be, this would have been our fourth year. Right. Um, but the, the first two years, um, Ubisoft is, or is one of the, uh, the companies that does their, uh, their press conference during mm-hmm. the week of E3. So they, they have a place to where you can watch it live. It's the, shoot, I forget the name of that theater, but in the back lot, um, they, they have like a party to where people can basically watch from like a, a big projector screen. So if you didn't get into the theater, you could still come hang out with. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah. So if, if you don't get what, I don't know if it's, you just don't get in, invited to it because it's mostly, you know, press and media and all that. You can still go hang out with, um, you know, they've got like gameplay demos back there. They've got food trucks. Um, it, it's a really cool time. Um, yep. Like if you're going to watch it somewhere, you might as well watch it with Ubisoft. Yep. Um, and we've that's been probably one of the the best ones we've been able to watch like, yeah. with like outside of something like uh um Xbox uh, Game Game Fest is that what Game it's called? Game Fest and then yeah. the, the, the um, Bethesda. Like obviously those are like those Game are Fest. like the, the dream yeah. for Top sure. Top tiers, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Cuz they they treat you like VIPs there, man. Yeah. Like we got it's like so this must be nice Tim. <laughs> good time. Yeah, got these donut uh like nice little donut breakfast, get you know, shuffled into this theater, uh, you know, talk to Aaron Greenberg, then get transported to this, uh, the Microsoft theater. They're like, okay, you guys are going to sit in front yeah. row Dude, because you guys are the fans. Yeah. Um, seeing Keanu Reeves. Um, anyways, back to Ubisoft, I guess. Right. Um, you guys are the randomly chosen people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you want to watch I'm the I'm Ubisoft thing with that. Ubisoft and you don't get into the theater, um you go you go to this back lot and they just let us in like we just randomly found it i think i didn't even I yeah think we, we even did it was just a ra- we like, literally hey, were what's, just walking what's yeah. like oh it's 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 you play you can come and play games you guys want in they just put these badges around our our necks they're like oh go have fun people walking around with free pizza rolls yep like this All is the pizza awesome rolls. like um yeah it was surprisingly I'm, like empty when we were there <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one was... and i'm pretty correct me if i'm wrong but the food trucks were free as well they oh, were yeah. and the, the taco food, free, food truck free. oh my god yeah. that taco food truck like like good good food trucks for free but then we try and go last year because we're like okay we know the good spot now we know we where know, to go to right, watch this right. like no no sorry no not this time Wait, what what yeah Why? disappointing but but we were here last year yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is, well, it but was, it was I, I don't even i think we went to we went to some burger place and watched it, I think, because it was hot. It I remember was, it was really it was hot, hot, and I think we just went to that restaurant in that Microsoft Plaza area. 
Oh, I, I think you're right. Yeah. I remember yeah. I really wanted a root beer. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yep. Yep. <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I miss E3. it. I know that yep. I know that we were worried that E3 wasn't going to be the same, but I'm just thinking it. about it. Yeah. And like, yeah. Oh, the like food it, in LA. Yeah. That fry bar. Dude. The cocoa puff ice cream. Mm. Mm. Well, I think it, I was there our, our first year and our second year, but I didn't go the year after that because I was just kind of like, meh. It's like, some people I want to see aren't going to be there. So, yep. um, I do have a, uh, a a question that I um, wanted to ask. So we've we've seen both controllers now, right? So just kind of thinking about next gen and and what we've seen and what we haven't seen. So Xbox controller um, looks looks pretty similar with the addition of a, uh, um, I think a share button, right? So they just. Right. Um, which I think is good. You know, take a take a page from Sony's book and just have the share button right on the controller. Um, I don't. How easy it is is it for you to clip something when you do something? Extremely like easy. Yeah, you just hold I down the, like the I hit the guide. Right? You guys got to literally hit the guide button and hit X or Y. X for screenshot or Y for okay. screenshot. X for record. It's that gotcha. easy. Boom, done. So basically, they just split it off into its own separate button. Actually, I would. Mm-hmm. Venture to say it's easier than Sony. If I'm being dead honest with you, yeah. because Sony, Sony, you have to. So Sony, if and correct me if I'm wrong, Sony, you have to hit the little button up top, right? Mm-hmm. The, the the touchpad. You click it or you click the share button. Yeah. And then you have to go up and down or on with the D pad or whatever to choose how to it's, how to record it or something, right? It's just like how you describe. Now, granted, it, it could have been okay. that way at some point, but once you hit the share button, you hit either triangle or square if you want. Oh, okay. So yeah. So it's the clicker. same. So it's the exact same. Yeah. Um. So that's really the only difference that, um, or the only like big difference with just like looking at the the controller, right? But then Sony has taken this completely different approach, um, and they've like really completely redesigned their controller. Mm. Um, it's fatter. Yeah, it's uh, definitely. It, it's it's kind of weird. It's like it's breaking tradition, right? Like you you have a PlayStation controller one through four, mm. and they they all fit into this this family, but this one you're like, it doesn't really look. Uh, doesn't really look like it fits in, which um, isn't a bad thing. I don't think I don't think changing it up is a bad thing. I'm just interested in controllers can never. I won't even say that because Nintendo has proved me wrong. Um, what what do you want in these next gen controllers um, that you don't have currently? So what what's something that's either been announced that you're excited for with these new controllers, or um, you would like to see in a in a next gen controller? indestructibility <laughs> so if i throw it it does not shatter made out of diamond made out of <laughs> diamond um i don't know honestly i'm happy with the controllers that we have yeah. I, if i if you're, yeah. if you're just be like hey how can we make this better i'd be like don't change it like i don't know like now i look i will always prefer my joystick being here versus here i don't want i can't do it with that one Hang on. yeah i don't want it's wrong i don't want this to be down here Okay, I don't. I don't want that. I'm so I like this. Him. Hmm? I, I I like this. This how I, this is the most comfortable of ever. This is awkward. This is awkward. Why is it's that awkward? awkward now? That's awkward now. Okay, no. Why? This 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 is this is it's perfect. Symmetry. No, it's sim- it doesn't no. It's no no. <laughs> Look, I can it's use a PlayStation Four controller. I just I don't hate it, but I definitely prefer the Xbox style. So me. Do you Twitch think it's a, a case of you don't know what you don't know kind of thing? Like, sure, yeah. I mean, look, you, they could add something to it. Like, I think PlayStation talked about like how they have like all these like super sensors now and the triggers and stuff. The, coming, the haptic right? feedback like, and all that. Yeah, like, and I'm sure all that'll be amazing. Like, I'm not yeah. opposed to them. But if you were just to straight ask me, what is something you want in a controller that you don't have right now? As far as like a big feature, I, I really don't have one. Like, I yeah. it, it to, to I, I I I want a controller to be a controller. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I can't. I can't really say anything that I would really want, um, other than the, the triggers, like how they have it now in the PS5 controller. I like that. That would be pretty cool. Uh, being able to feel the differences in, in you know your specific things that you're doing. Yeah, that's um, gonna be really nice. Um, A heating slash cooling unit. Oh, interesting. So, like, if your hands are cold, you want it to like warm your hands. Like, just just warm up. I not, want not get my hot, controller but warmer. I want my controller to secrete so. gamer goo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, yep. 
Because that is the only thing. Like, if my hands are really cold, I'm playing can kind of be not easy. So, like, yeah, I don't want it to. I don't want that. Sure, that's fair. So, but, and like, if my hands are really hot and sweaty, so there you go. There, there's my one thing. <laughs> Your one thing: a heating and cooling system. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm with uh, I'm with you, Trey. I I think I'm most excited for like the the haptic feedback. Um, yeah. To where it's going to be a lot more specific on like like pulling back the bow of a or pulling back the string of a bow is going to feel different than like it, if you like crash a car into a uh, into like the side of a building or something. Like it's going to feel. I don't know. They just made it knife seem comes like, out, stabs your hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's like it's like kind of how the the switch does it, right? Like they have like those really cool the HD, HD uh, rumble. rumble. Yeah, like they had one game for that, right? Oh. Like pretty much just one game for that. And that was 1 2 Switch. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or at least the, the HD uh, Rumble the game, right? Yeah. And I feel like we all knew that was not going to do much, right? Like Yeah. Like they didn't really do much for some of the games that came. Like granted, I, I will say that Animal Crossing does it. Does it? Uh like when you're fishing. Uh, oh, you okay. It. Um, but other than that, I mean, I really don't, I think it was like a, like one of those features that were, that were missed, you know, like they, they brought it out. It was really exciting. Cause it was really cool. Like being able to feel like in like where a ball would be at if you're trying to, you know, do something with it. But like, they could have made like a, a Zelda game where you had to like do a puzzle mm-hmm. with that, you know, and they point. just, they didn't, I don't know. Missed opportunity. Yeah. It's a very good. Maybe point. Breath of the Wild 2 will be something like that, but yeah. Yes. It's the first ever sequel Zelda game coming out, right? Yeah. Uh, no. Or no. Uh, what was uh, what was the other one? Well, there's no game called Blankety Blank Two, correct? <laughs> Blankety yeah. Blank Two. Is th- yeah. 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 Because I know what. Uh, two. Uh, oh my blue. God, Wind Waker Two. I would take in now. Yeah. yeah. That would take a Wind Waker Two easily. So good. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting because Nintendo's not going to have a direct at E3. Nope. Right. They're, uh, I mean, from from the sound of it, they're kind of struggling. I I kind of transition into this um, work from home uh, phase, um, which is fair. Like nobody expected it. It's not like right. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so that that'll be kind of disappointing because that's that's always one of the, like the the big directs. Like this is where we get all of our our big announcements. Um, like I'll, I'll never forget us hearing about Metroid prime three sitting, hmm. sitting in the, the lobby of the convention center, just waiting to go into E3 Dude, and in everybody just lost their mind. Oh, that, that was cool. That was a good moment. Um, good moments. Yeah. We'll see. I don't, I mean, um, we did get, it wasn't even a direct, but, uh, the announcement of paper Mario and the, or what is it? Yeah. Origami King. Origami King. I'm really surprised. Yeah. It was just like, we announced it and it's coming out in like two months. Yeah. Oh. What? So that yep. it, it makes me think that it was something that was going to be announced at like a Nintendo direct. But yeah, once they realized, okay, we can't really do that. Like we can't really produce something on that scale. Let's just, let's just get it out there. I still don't understand why they have to keep changing their combat system. So, it had what, a perfect combat system for two games. Yeah. So no from one what disagreed. I've seen, I, I don't think it's it's solely based on that. Are you talking about the ring system? Well, that or just like why don't just give us our turn based Paper Mario game? Yeah. So I I've seen I've seen it in two different. I've seen the ring combat to where like you you turn the you turn the rings and line up the enemies and stuff. But I've also seen there's a screenshot where he's fighting booze. Um, and they, it looks like normal Paper Mario combat. Um, I wonder if it has to deal with like the amount of enemies that are on screen. That if it turns into, yeah, or if it's just like an into... environmental based, like, yeah. you know, like only it certain could be areas amazing. you can have. What's that? It could be amazing. Yeah, it could be good. Who knows? Uh, I mean, partners are coming back. That's always been my big thing. The Wii version was just the worst. Colors like, was that color splash. Main, no. Whatever the one where it was literally just Mario, but you're paperized. Like you're literally just going around and you're just jumping on them, and like it's normal Mario. That um that was the one where you could flip. And there's it. a dragon. No, the it dragon might, was Thousand Year Door, wasn't it? No, this is different. This is the week Thousand Year Door is GameCube, correct? Yeah. 
Yeah, GameCube one was really good. This is a different one. Yeah. Paper Mario is on the Wii. There's a Paper Mario game on the Wii. Yeah. I was really happy. Uh, now I got to find out what it is because... Um, I mean, I, I was, know what you're talking about because I played it and I remember but it was literally were star doors. They like you. They were like black and white and you had to fill them with color. Yeah, uh, but I mean, it was... Obviously, it didn't leave a lasting impact. No, um, it didn't. Uh, it was just Super Paper Mario. Oh, That's yes. all it was. Because it, you could but, change but, it to like a... Like, like a three, you, you had like your two D like view, but then ways. you could change it to where like a, it was almost. It just right. changed your perspective. Like, yeah, but it was literally like when you jumped on somebody, didn't initiate a combat. You just okay, they're yeah. gone. Like yeah. it was, it was literally just Mario paperized yeah, for sure. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It looks like it's back to its roots, man. I hope so. I'm, I'm hopeful. Well, um, the the one on the the three DS, as not great as it was, sticker was star still, or something. Sticker stars was at least something. Yeah. Oh well, I'm yeah. gonna get it. I'm gonna play it. Did you guys see that? There's the uh, the rumor of Metroid Prime trilogy coming out uh, next month to the Switch. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. Actually, that'd be really yeah. cool. June 16th or something like that, which is only less than a month away. I just want to be... give me that Metroid Prime Four. Let's do it. Just give me a teaser in the game. Yeah. So I just want Switch Two, more powerful, better. The I would love to. Version. I would love to replay the the Prime trilogy. Man, those were such good games. Yeah, those are really good games. I never played them. Really? So it'd be really yeah. So it'd be really nice for us to come oh, out because yeah. then I'd get a chance to play all these Metroid games that everyone loves so much. Yeah, for sure. It, it's going to be an interesting uh, couple months, man. Because I don't know. I'm I'm really thankful that that Jeff Keighley's putting this Summer Games Fest together to kind of tie all of these events back to to something, and, and I guess making making a show out of it. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it's fun. Well. We're, we'll we'll still be able to do like our our live reactions like we we like to do because we we like watching with uh you know with the community and all that so i'm i'm glad that there's going to be shows that we'll, we're still able to do that um with people i mean I, xbox said that they you know they they'll still be doing their show um xbox 2020 yeah we'll we'll see if we can do uh or if uh sony does something i would assume they, that they, would. they have to do something like mm. they have to dude like it's killing me <laughs> We got to get something, man. Um, I know they're hard at work, though. I know they're hard at work, and they're just they're waiting to drop the bomb. They're we'll uh, it. it's going to be huge. I'm excited. I'm I'm just, excited. I'm really curious what it's going to look like. Xbox has me hooked right now, man. Yeah, Xbox, Xbox has me hooked. You think so? That so far, yeah, yeah. I've, until I, feel like I see, until I see proven, until I see the PlayStation Five, it's nothing to me. Xbox has shown games. They've shown the console. Um, you know they 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 have a lineup of like you know future things to show. PlayStation. Here's a logo. Here's a, a tech thing. And Control. here's a a, a a a technical display that's not going to be out until next year, anyways. You know, it's like it's cool. True. All Unreal Engine, great, fantastic. I'm happy for the gaming you know developers. Stuff everything's like going to use that. But even yeah, but every yeah, everybody can use that. But it's like for Unreal Five, it's not coming out till next year. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it was pretty, yes, but who's to say that wasn't a pre-rendered thing? You know, like I get that they they're saying like, yeah, this is Unreal Five gameplay. I don't believe that. I didn't see someone like with a controller in their hand. We've all it, been you know fooled I mean? there before. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it's like for me, it's like they could come out with. They could bring back the Killzone trailer that they made forever ago uh-huh. and say this is gameplay. You know what I mean? Like, give me a Killzone like HD remaster. I love those games. That was my Halo killer back in the day. Killzone? Yeah, Killzone, Killzone was awesome. Was like, give me that and then be like, here's the gameplay trailer. And then pan out and actually have someone playing the game, you know? Like, I just want to see that. I want to see the like the actual console in, like, someone using a controller, like zoom in on the controller and like someone's tapping the trigger and it's like giving them resistance or something like, you know what I mean? Like give me something PlayStation, anything. You're here first folks. Trey, give, give him something. Give me something, man. (sighs) Xbox is crushing right now, man. Like game pass. Like I, I, I'm so excited for, for it. All of it. X cloud game pass. Like they're on it. Games as a service is like, they're crushing it. That's all I have to say. I don't know, man. It's never, 
I guess it's never really bothered me as much. Like I know I'm going to end up like I'm going to get both at launch anyway. So I guess to me, I'm, I don't know. I'll be happy with both. I'm sure. Yeah. It's like, I'm not like dog on one or the other, but it's like, I know PlayStation is waiting for like that price point to be unveiled to like show everything else. Right. Right. Like, but you're, you're losing a bit of your audience when you have your competitor that's like just like laying it all on the line like yeah. this is here like this is that we have these studios like it's just unfortunate as a playstation fan yeah. xbox is looking way better right now it's still uh it's still super early too like we're we're like at minimum six months away but um, that's the thing, though, and right? And a lot can happen in those six months. Well, and next but month is June. Thing. This next month is when a lot of the big stuff was supposed to be revealed anyway. So hopefully we get something next month. Yeah. But that's the thing, though. Like, I'm trying to be optimistic, right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying so hard to be optimistic for PlayStation. Like, I'm very excited. I hope they just drop, you know, a, a nuke of stuff. Just a whole bunch of stuff all at once. Mm-hmm. But it's just the fact that Xbox has already had things set up they have dates for things we have gameplay out there we have the console the way it looks like people have they've had it in their hands they've they've shown you know previous games running better with the xbox one x or sorry the series x it's like i don't know i respect the fact that xbox isn't holding back like a lot exactly they're just just, the transparency is nice for sure they're just like, you know what? We're not afraid to show you what we got. And we know Sony's going to see this and we're not afraid. Sure, here it is. Yeah. Fucking go for it. Yeah, I I definitely like the the transparency from uh from Xbox, but it if we're thinking if we're talking about this um from the sense of a consumer that because I'd say most consumers are going to pick one or the other, right? Mo- most right. people aren't going to get uh both at launch. Um mm. Some people are just not good with uh, with budgeting and decide to get both at once. Right. Um, that I'm that consumer. Yeah. So so someone that is only going to get get one at launch. I think you can you can say that you have your um, and th- this isn't you, Trey. I'm not you know speaking directly at you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's fine. <laughs> um, so someone can say uh, right now, say they're in in the boat that you are, Trey. Where um, okay, Xbox has shown me everything. I, at this point, if I had to choose, I'm going to get an Xbox because I, I don't know anything otherwise. But say come say it's September and right that like, you know, we're only like months away at that point. Say it's September mm-hmm. and you get this huge showcase, um, all these great launch titles that you never expected. All it takes is something like that. And it doesn't matter where it falls in that timeline. As long as it's before you make your purchase, that's what matters. Um, so I, I guess what I, I guess what I'm getting at is this point in time doesn't really matter. People can be on either side, but it's really going to come down to when those pre-orders open up um, is when is I guess when, when that, when that choice matters, because all it takes is one, one little showcase or one bit of information to flip someone. So at this point, it's, it's just saying, okay, I like what I've seen from this so far, but right. you still don't have my money. So the, but the as a fan here. of PlayStation, I'm sure it's hard to see all these Xbox people Absolutely. getting what they want. Yeah. And you're just left with this really weird guy telling you tech, tech, techie stuff that you don't understand. Trust me, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like if, if I had to choose only one, I would want to choose PlayStation 5, you know? And, and that, again, only just comes down to I know that they've got the exclusives that I want. Um, so Halo, what? Wow. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I don't know. But we also haven't played uh, Master Chief Collection together, so. So true. I don't know. Is that going to change that's, with Infinite? But, but that's for, I mean, I, I, I got the Master Chief Collection downloaded. Look, y'all. Me too. Just, I have it. it. It's been installed. No one says anything. Who knows? I, I'm Will going Fam to, ever play Halo again? Find out next time. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote to kick a, a, a Warzone night so I can get in on some Halo instead. We can do a win with that. That would be fine. We'll figure <laughs> that out. Um, so, but to be fair, I know they what they only have one, two, and Reach right now on PC. Yeah. So I I didn't really get into it until three. So um, I'll probably. But two was the best. Never mind. You know what? It doesn't matter. Two was the best. I think two had the best multiplayer. Nice. 
personal. I um opinions. I really got into it in three. For Reach sure. it got way too complicated for no reason. They, well, that's, that's when they added all like, they just, the, they the added the, a super armor and like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it. But I was, I'd play it with you, Trey. Okay. I was just talking to Trey the other day about the um, <laughs> going up to someone with a shotgun and then like mailing him right after for like the. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so satisfying, man. So satisfying. Just turn the corner, boom. Yeah. Two piecing. Good yep. Times. Good times. I was toxic back then. I'm not even going to lie. I yeah, I really am Halo upset life. that I missed out on Toxic Trevor. <laughs> like, I hope when, if we play Halo together, just it peaks back up. It'd oh, I, I don't think it will. I've, uh... I'm going gonna, gonna to force it. <laughs> You're just going to keep egging me on? <laughs> I... <laughs> I'll just leave the game at that point. No. I don't need to put up with this. <laughs> you can't. You're dialed in now. Don't right. touch that dial now. We're just, We're just getting, getting started. started. <laughs> All right. Don't touch that dial now. We're oh, just geez. getting started. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> Tim, that's why we need to get you one of those soundboards so you can do cool, cool sounds. I would do something. <laughs> yes. Uh I don't know, guys. I'm excited. I'm also ready to get out of the house a little bit, but Can't hoping that we. In. Um, I don't know. I need something new to play. I've been I've jumped back in a while a little bit, um, but even then, like I'm I'm really just excited for the new expansion. I don't, there's not a whole lot I I still need to do in this current one that, um, I'm too excited. Yeah, for I, I lost interest in this expansion or the this sorry the one the current expansion. Yeah, I'm ready for the next one already. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll have a. Luckily, we'll have a lot more to talk about now that we're we're getting the uh, the podcast up and running again. Back to mm-hmm. its every two week schedule, um, and with that, I mean that puts us right. That puts us at June seventh. So I mean we're mm-hmm. we're going to be right, like right before all these all these announcements kick off. So yep, we've got a lot to look forward to. Um, I know it, it's it's different. It's not it's not going to have the same kind of hype level that uh, um, that it normally has every year. We're not flying out to L.A. Um, we're not able to do like a big watch party. Um, right. But we're going to make it we're going to make it fun. We'll, we we'll have our own watch, watch parties, party. digital watch parties. Yeah. Do them in Discord. Yeah, we'll, we'll have, have we'll a good Discord time. watch parties. It'll be it'll be a good time. We'll make it fun. We just have to wait to see what we uh, what gets announced now. This will be an interesting year, fellas. Yeah, it sure will. Um, thanks for uh, for tuning in, guys, um, for episode seventy three. Thanks for hanging in with us while we uh, we kind of work through this this quarantine life and get out of uh, a creative slump. At least uh, for me personally, um, it's been. I think I needed this just to you know, kind of get together and, and talk to everyone. Um, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Definitely needed to, to socialize and yeah. talk about what's been happening out there. So, um, as always, check it out on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, whatever you want to listen to. We'll be there. I would think so. Coming Hopefully. soon to, to Google Stadia. Yeah. Watch, watch <laughs> us watch us in, in Google Stadia. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, I hear Verizon's giving them out free to... Uh, 5G customers. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> Can't get rid Good of luck them. having 5G. Um, all right. Thanks. Uh, thanks again, guys. Thanks for the support with FamCast. We'll see you guys next episode. Later, guys. Thanks for listening to FamCast. Be sure to subscribe for the latest episodes and follow us on Twitch, Twitter, and our other socials at For All Mankind.